Today's video, we're going to talk about crossing the border into Canada safely and how to not get yourself in a situation like this. Respect my authority! <laughs> oh. Oh. What's going on everybody? My name is Brian, you're watching Angling Anarchy, and we are going to talk about crossing the border into Canada mostly for fishing purposes but if you're driving across you can go ahead and watch this and maybe you'll get something out of it who knows but I go to Eagle Lake in Ontario twice a year and have been for quite some time in all my years going to Canada I've probably crossed the border mostly to International Falls in Minnesota and Fort Francis would be the the sister city in Ontario probably 50 times so I am by no means an expert at this, but I've done it a lot. If you want to look at any of these like super legality type things, it's, you're not going to find it here. I'm going to give you some tips to hopefully cross the border without any headaches. If you want to look up exact things like, can I bring chicken, which is a thing every now and again, or eggs that sort of thing that changes from year to year month to month so don't go looking for that in any youtube videos the canada border services agency i will leave a link for that website in the description below so that is a very good resource but as i said we're just going to go over a few things that i've come across over the years that seem to make crossing the border a little bit less of a hassle Maybe it'll keep you from getting pulled over and having your truck ripped apart. I've never had that happen. I've been pulled over before. It's usually just a nice look in the back and uh, maybe lift the boat cover up and we're on our way. So luckily, no horror stories about vehicles getting ripped apart. But if you're not nice to the border agents, they can do that. So this isn't a time to be silly. Uh, it's a time for a lot of yes sir or ma'am, no sir or ma'am, that sort of stuff. And just generally being pleasant. That will go a long way. But yes, let's get into some specifics here. You're on your way up to Canada. You're in your vehicle, pulling a boat probably. And you're coming up to wherever, International Falls I'll say for this because that's where I cross. First of all, there are certain times where crossing uh, goes a lot quicker. We usually cross in the middle of the night. <laughs> I know that's not an option for everybody, but two in the morning, awesome time to cross. If that is not an option, Saturday morning is probably about the worst time to cross. If you're heading up on a Friday, if you can cross that evening, get over to Fort Francis or somewhere and then get a hotel if you don't want to drive the rest of the way up or your cabin is not ready, that is a really good option or getting close to the border in Minnesota and staying somewhere for the night and getting up super early and then crossing the border is also a nice option. There are websites you can go to and I will try to link one below as well where you can see what the border wait times are but for the most part when we're headed up there we're just going and you're you're if you're stuck in a line you're stuck in a line and hopefully you're not but uh, those are a couple of tips to hopefully avoid long lines at the border. Now, when you're in line and getting ready to pull up into one of the lanes where you'll be talking to one of the agents, there are a couple of things that you'll want to do that at the very least it'll make it look like you've done this before, if, even if you haven't. And it hopefully will, uh, you know, you want to just have confidence. You don't want to act suspicious, obviously. But when you pull up, Put the truck in park or the vehicle in park. Uh, that first and foremost, remove hats. Everybody, that goes for everybody. Take off sunglasses. They don't like sunglasses at all. If you have a regular pair of glasses, obviously leave those on. But yes, hats off, sunglasses off. Turn the radio off. You don't need something playing in the background while they're questioning you. Obviously, roll your window down. Whoever is pulling up, but roll the back window down as well. Even if there's nobody back there. It just lets them know that you're being open and transparent and it will make things go smoother. Trust me. Just because I've experienced this because one of my buddies was eating McDonald's one of the times we pulled up, don't do that. They're going to have questions for not only the driver coming up and rolling the window down and talking to them, but they may ask questions of other people. So everybody needs to be attentive. If you have kids or a younger person, 
it's not a time to be playing the DS or whatever gaming system <laughs> they have. Everybody should be at attention and listening to the border agent. And if a question is directed at you, answer it. If it is not, be quiet. Just be quiet. That's all you have to do. One of the first things they will ask you for once you're there in park, ready to answer questions, they will ask you for your passport. So I always have this open to the page with your face on it, with your picture on it, and all of your information. If you have multiple people, I will put them open and stacked in there so that when they open them up, everything's right there. They don't have to fiddle around to find it. There is a spot to sign it right here. Make sure that is signed because I've rolled up with a buddy, didn't have it signed. It wasn't anything that was bad. The guy just asked us to please sign it. And then make sure none of the pages are ripped. Uh, mine is in fairly decent shape, but make sure it's in good shape. If, if any of the pages get ripped, uh, it's probably not a bad idea to um, get that taken care of and maybe get a new passport. If you're within about six months of your passport expiring, probably not a bad idea just to get it taken care of. I've heard stories about um, passports that are still valid, but really close to the expiration date and uh, problems being had. So just so you know, just something to think about. Once they have your passport, they're gonna scan it. I mean, they'll obviously be able to tell how many times you've passed. I, I'm sure in my case that helps me because I go pretty much the same time from year to year once in June, once in August. So I'm sure that helps in crossing. The more you do it without any problems, the better off you're going to be, I would assume. Once they do that, they will have questions for you. And it's probably not a bad idea, regardless of whose vehicle you're in, uh, if you're going up with a group, whoever the, <laughs> the coolest cucumber of the group, I guess, have them drive and just somebody that is comfortable answering questions like, where are you going? Where will you be staying? So have the city that you're going, have the address perhaps of the resort that you may be going to or a friend's house that you may be going to. That will come in handy. They may ask you how long you're going to be there. So, you know, usually it's a week trip, seven days, Saturday to Saturday. Have all these things rolling around in your head so you can answer them. They are going to ask you, especially if you're on a fishing trip, they will ask you if you're bringing live bait. I don't believe right now anything is um, allowed. In the past it has. They will obviously ask you if you have any firearms. If you're going on a hunting trip, I believe there's uh, paperwork that you have to have filled out and that's for another video. So. That is something you'll have to look at. Other obvious questions that they'll be asking you are, do you have any alcohol or tobacco? For alcohol, you can have, I believe it's 1.5 liters of wine, so two 750 ml bottles or a Magnum. As far as liquor goes, it is, I think it's 1.14 liters, but just stick with a liter. Uh, that will, you'll be safe that way. Beer, it's a case. So a 24 of cans, of 12 ounce cans, because there is, I think it's 287 ounces. So if you've got tall boys or something like that, uh, they may get you for that. But we usually just, we usually don't take beer, quite honestly. The beer in Canada is fantastic. Take liquor, buy the beer there. That's just a little tip from me. If you have someone in your group that smokes uh, 200 cigarettes, or 50 cigars or 200 grams or seven ounces of chew, I believe are the restricted limits that you can have. Again, all of those are on that Canada Border Services Agency a website that I'll have linked below so you can double check that, but that will give you a rough idea of what you can bring. So know what you have when they ask that question. They may ask you things like, are you bringing anything up to Canada that you're going to leave there? Uh, if you are, you should let them know. You may have to pay a duty on that. If the camp that you're going to, if they ask you to bring you, bring them something, um, yeah, be careful with that. Don't go taking stuff over the border and try to lie to the agents because that will, if you ever want to go back to Canada, it may make things difficult. So try to be on the up and up as much as possible. Now for questions that are a little bit strange, but I had definitely been asked are, how do you know each other? And this is not a time to be snide or silly or anything like that. Anybody that knows me knows I love to make a good joke. Not a time for it. Try to be as detailed as possible uh, without giving them your entire life story, I guess is the best way to put it. You know, this is my fishing buddy. I've known him since high school, that sort of thing. 
They may ask everyone what they do for work. Uh, I don't know exactly why they ask you that. I have some ideas, but you know, uh, don't be surprised if you get asked that as well, because I have been asked that definitely. Now I'm certain there are some questions that I'm missing, but uh, those are the main ones. Just have that stuff sort of in your brain, look them in the eye, don't act shady or suspicious, and just answer the questions cool, calm, collected, and you shouldn't have too many problems. Now there is an issue with folks that have an OWI or a DUI uh, from the US going into Canada. I'm not sure about the specifics of that. They've changed over the years. Um, so again, that Canada Border Services Agency website is going to be your best place to check that out because no one wants to drive all the way up there only to get turned around or to be surprised by, uh, I know sometimes if you pay a fine, they will let you across, but surprises at the border are not good. So whatever you can do, if you know you've got somebody in your group that has that, have them get online. I know you can call up there and ask them questions. They might be able to get things all squared away for you, but also know that that is an issue that I know some folks have, have run into. That's what I know for crossing the border. So once you've gone up to Canada, and again, I am gearing this towards fishermen, but hopefully this will be useful if you are not going up there for a fishing trip. Let's talk about coming back into the States. Same things apply as far as talking to, the, to those border agents. You definitely want to have anything that you've bought up there, any gifts that you're bringing back, any alcohol, the same restrictions for alcohol going up, I believe, are the same for coming back. So if you want to bring back a nice uh, case of kokanee beer for yourself to have in the States, then, you know, obviously tell the border agents about that. If you're bringing fish back, the best way to do this, and a lot of times they won't check you at the border. Sometimes you'll be coming back and just before you get to the border, there'll be a checkpoint that you have to pull off on the side, uh, a game and fish checkpoint. They're going to want to see what you've got for fish that you're bringing back. The best way to do that is to get a vacuum sealer and when you fillet the fish you have to leave a 2 by 2 inch piece of skin on the fillet. So I usually put the fillet, we usually do one fish per bag, sometimes you can get two whether it's pike or walleye, and nice and flat so that you can see that patch of skin uh, through the plastic bag. If you've got them all nice and flat and you can set them out when they ask you for them that will make things go very fast at those game and fish checkpoints. You don't want to have six or eight fillets balled up in a Ziploc bag. And you know, if the agent or whoever is checking, you can't see what's going on, well, it's going to cause problems. So whether it's in a Ziploc bag, frozen flat or a vacuum sealer works really nice. That is the best way to do that. And a side note for those game checks, have your cooler where all that stuff is at the back of the truck or an easy place to get to. So you're not having to, uh, of course, dig around for that. Just makes things go a lot smoother. One thing to watch out for, especially if you're trailing a boat, coming back into Minnesota or driving through Minnesota at all. And I know a couple other states have this rule as well is they want you to have your bilge plug out of the boat, out of the back end of the boat when you're traveling through the state. So make sure you do that. And especially when you're crossing the border back in to the States into Minnesota there, make sure you have that out because sometimes they will ask you and let you perhaps get out of the vehicle, take it out. If you haven't, sometimes that will get you a ticket. I know they've been giving away tickets for that. So be careful and mindful about that. That is what I have, uh, what few tips I have for crossing the border in the years that I've been doing it. If you have any specific questions that you'd like to ask, uh, please leave them in the comments below. I will try to answer them as best I can, and chances are, uh, if you go to that Canada Border Services Agency website, you will find answers there as well. I'm just hoping this will give you uh, a little bit of confidence and give you some ideas of how to quickly and cleanly cross into the border without any problems. Thank you everyone for watching this video. I will see you on the next one.